Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Brian Crumby Radio Hour on Saga 960 AM. I come to you every Monday through Friday at 6 o'clock on 960 on your AM dial, as well as streamed online at uh, Saga, www.saga960am.ca, or you can get all my podcasts and video casts on my website, briancrumby.com. Well, there was a really interesting report uh, a week or two ago that Barbados is inviting us all to move to Barbados since uh, COVID-19 has us working remotely, working from home. They say, why not come and live in Barbados for a year and do all your work from there? So I said, this sounds like a good deal. And we contacted the Barbadian uh, government and they put us in touch with Peter Mears, who is the director of Canada for the Barbadian Tourism Marketing uh, Entity. Uh, and he joins us from Toronto, but he's from Barbados and he's gonna tell us whether Barbados is a great place to move for a year for our virtual COVID-19 work. Peter, how are you tonight? I am very well, sir. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Great, thank you. So, Excellent. Like, I'm really intrigued by this opportunity. Tell me a little bit about it, if you could. Well, I think uh, it's a wonderful initiative. Uh, this Welcome Stamp program does two things. It helps Canadians to remedy uh, the cabin fever that we know they have. And then, of course, it's, it's a way for us to sort of rebuild, start to rebuild our tourism industry. So. Essentially, it's, it's inducing uh, individuals and even corporate teams to consider uh, working from home, but doing that in Barbados for, for the period of a year. So we think it's a wonderful and timely initiative as persons start to contemplate uh, travel options, mindful of the fact that remote work certainly appears to be with us for the foreseeable future. So tell me what the, uh, the rules are. This is uh, a one-year uh, visa. Do, you, do we get uh, free accommodation at uh, the Sandy Lane or something? Uh, not on this occasion, sorry. Um, but yes, it is It is a one-year visa. Essentially, um, persons who are employed outside of Barbados and earning in excess of uh, 50,000 $50, US dollars annually are eligible to, to apply. And uh, unfortunately, as I said, you're not going to get free accommodation. That, those costs are pretty much at you, but you're pleased to know that uh, you have access to the full range of accommodation on island from our, our, our hotel product um, to perhaps if you're looking for something a little bit more lavish in, in, by way of a villa. Um, so you have access to, to all of those facilities depending on your tastes and of course your budget. And is uh, Barbados Tourism Marketing helping people find the right accommodation? Um, we, we can certainly point them um, to some, to some to, we, can give, we can lend some assistance. Uh, we're not necessarily... Um, and holding them to the extent of, of the specifics, but we certainly will guide them in the, in the right direction depending on what their, their, their preference is. And uh, what's the taxation uh, um, situation for people that move to Barbados for a year? So the, the, the situation is that, well, in order to apply, I should say, um, individuals uh, will, will apply, will have, will, sorry, can I, can I just do that again? Sure, go ahead. So in order to apply, uh, for individuals, uh, you, you have a non-refundable fee of Canadian uh, $2,700. And for families, uh, those considering uh, venturing with families, it's uh, $4,000 Canadian dollars. Uh, and that's pretty much the, the non-refundable fee uh, for persons who will be considering the program. But uh, what about income tax? Do I have to pay income tax on the income I make while I'm uh, staying in Barbados for a year? No. So if you're a non-resident of Canada, you don't have to pay Canadian income tax and you- You would, you would, you would, continue, you would continue to pay uh, uh, tax in, in your jurisdiction. But if I'm not a resident of Canada, why would I pay the tax in Canada? But you're still a resident of, you're still a resident of Canada. Oh, so even though I'm a resident of Barbados for a year on a visa, I don't uh, qualify as a resident of Barbados? No. Oh, okay, that's too bad. I was thinking that there would be a tax <laughs> opportunity here as well. Yeah, I will, I will double check that for you, but I, my understanding is that um, you would still pay in the jurisdiction. Okay, so you, you pay the fee, which is like a visa application fee or something? Essentially. Okay, and is it a one-year visa such that I get kicked out at the end of that one year? Yeah, it's a one-year. Um, I'm told that consideration is being given to, to see an extension, but for the moment, it is still one year. Well, it sounds like a fascinating program. Um, I'm going to look into it and... Uh, I can't think of a better place, uh, though, you know what, if you really want to entice people, you should think about some cut rate on the accommodation at either the Crane or uh, Sandy Lane. Uh, you come well researched. Uh, those are two, two of uh, my favorites uh, on either side of the island. And that's the, that's the good thing. I think um, Barbados gives you that element of diversity uh, in a number of ways, whether it be 
the, the contrasting coastlines if you decide that you perhaps want to situate on the, on the western side of the island, or if you, for instance, uh, prefer uh, something that's perhaps a little bit more rugged, uh, the eastern, southeastern corridor of the island will give you that. And that's what makes Barbados um, suitable for a program like this. We can offer a level of diversity, not just in the accommodation, but in, in many other areas as well. Uh, we, we remain the culinary capital of the Caribbean. So persons who are applying would want to pack their appetites when they're coming to Barbados because you're certainly in uh, for top-notch top cuisine and in varied forms. And then all that goes with that. Um, and then, of course, we have an infrastructure that works. And that's something that we've been mindful of uh, in conceptualizing this program, ensuring that we have the, the technological infrastructure and capacity to support um, the volume that, that we expect. Uh, Barbados boasts the finest uh, mobile and telecommunication system in the Caribbean. And um, multiple companies are at the ready to sort of facilitate um, that, le that level of connectivity um, for prospective applicants. We're chatting tonight uh, with Peter Mears, who's the director uh, for Canada for uh, Barbadian Tourism Marketing. We're talking about uh, this special visa they put in place, trying to entice us all to move down there for a year uh, while we do our remote work. And I'm sitting here from my home office. So frankly, my home office could be uh, at Sandy Lane or, or somewhere uh, in, uh, in Barbados. So it sounds kind of enticing. We're going to take a break for some messages and come back more with Peter in just a minute. We're going to talk a little bit about Barbados and where you might want to stay. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Brian Crabby Radio Hour Saga 960. We're talking about COVID-19 and where you can set up your remote head office, home office. Um, and Peter Mayers, who's the director of uh, Canada for the Barbadian Tourism Marketing uh, Organization, suggests that we all move to Barbados and take up residency there for a year on a special visa they've got. And Peter, I think what you said is that uh, there's a fee of a couple thousand bucks that we have to pay. How much was it? Uh, so for individuals, 20, 2,700 Canadian, um, those considering uh, moving with families, it would be a 4,000 Canadian dollars. And we get to move there. Uh, we're not sure what the tax uh, situation is. Peter thinks we have to pay our Canadian tax, um, which would be uh, too bad, but uh, c'est la vie. Um, and, uh, and we get to spend some time there. And what Peter is saying is the infrastructure is good. I understand that the cell phone service is expensive, but uh, readily available. Is that true? Or readily available, multiple te telecommunications companies um, on the island providing that providing that service. And one of the things that we've noticed, um, certainly as a result of the remote work, uh, the volume of um, interaction um, via video and telephone, uh, Bar Barbados has functioned exceedingly well these last uh, three four months. And that's one of the reasons why we're confident that this program um, can work because Barbados works. There's numerous Canadian banks that have uh, bank uh, establishments in Barbados, correct? That is correct. Um, the Canadian banks have actually paved the way for the Barbados banking system, whether Royal Bank, um, CIBC, um, Scotiabank. So there'll be that element of familiarity as well for Canadians who, 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 set, up, who set up residency there for the year. Now, you mentioned the west uh, side versus the southeast side. Uh, tell us a little bit about it. the west side uh, Sandy Lane is probably uh, the, uh, the best known hotel, but there's numerous others that uh, go all the way down. There's a little uh, um, town just uh, north uh, or what, St. James Town or something like that that's near uh, Sandy Lane that's really quite nice. Yeah, Holtong, whole, whole uh, in, whole in the parish of St. James, yes. Whole Town, uh, which has got uh, sort of a yacht club in it, I think, doesn't it not? That is, yeah, that is correct, yes. And uh, I understand a fair number of Canadians. Well, actually, have got, actually, uh, actually, and, and we, we can probably we can probably revisit that. The, 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 the Barbados Yacht Club is not so much in Whole Town. Um, that is actually just on the outskirts of Bridgetown. But north of Whole Town, um, you have got Port St. Charles, and I think that might be the one you're you're referring to. So that's actually Spitestown. So I don't know if Spitestown. you want to just re revisit that that component. So Spitestown and Whole Town are in St. James Parish. No, Whole Tongue is in St. James and Spice Tongue is in St. Peter. Okay, and they're both on the west uh, side? Correct. And the beaches there are quite nice and, uh, and not too wavy? Yeah, the western side of the island is, is the, the, the placid and tranquil side. That's fed by the Caribbean Sea. So, um, you know, that is, you know, pristine water. Um, that's the side of the island, for instance, where your afternoon catamaran cruise can occur, where you just sail along the, 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 the platinum west coast. Right. And population of Barbados is what, about a hundred and something thousand? 
No, it's closer to 300,000. Oh, really? 300,000. Okay. Yes. And, and, um, and it's sort of like a, a triangle, uh, if I can remember, correct? Not at all. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not, 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 not really a triangle. Someone once said it, it, it more resembles a pork chop. A pork chop. Okay. Yeah, that was and, said. But it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not really a triangle per se. The island is 166 square miles, uh, right. 21 miles long by 14 miles wide. Um, and really, people say it kind of sits between the, the, the placid Caribbean Sea on the west coast and then the rugged Atlantic um, Ocean feeding the eastern side. And that's, that's, that's why we say um, the contrasting element, the contrasting coastlines um, actually remains a hallmark of the product. Right, and so the East Coast is uh, very cold and very rough, is it not? It's um, certainly more um, well, well positioned for the, the element of soft adventure, the surf and whatnot. Um, that's the side of the island that you would, you would, you would venture to for that type of activity. And uh, the Southern end is... Uh, is Mixture, yeah. Um, it's almost like where the Atlantic and the Caribbean meet. Um, and you still have a number of resorts um, on the South Coast who, who take advantage of that and is still very, very um, accommodating um, swimming conditions there on the South Coast. And there's a town that has a, a fish fry every Friday. That is correct. That's on the South Coast as well. Oyston's Fish Fry. Uh, Oyston's small fishing village in the southern part of the island. And um, years ago, you, you would venture to Oyston's to, to purchase raw fish. And that has not been transformed into one of the, the main eateries and, and one of the leading entertainment options on the island. Um, oysters and it, they, they were rated exceedingly um, favorably when Barbados had a relationship with the Zagat Guide um, for, for the culinary experience and the entertainment. But I go a step further. I think oysters probably is one of the best examples of the notion of community tourism where um, visitors and locals come together, can co-mingle, and uh, where visitors can enjoy certain authentic elements of, of Barbados, including uh, the world's oldest rum, Mount Gay rum. Oh, and, really? Excellent. Uh, imagine having a steady and ready access to that um, uh, for, for, for a year. I'm sure that is enough, is enough to quench the thirst of a number of persons. And there's a, an island or a strait or something like that called St. Lawrence Gap on the south end. It's renowned for its restaurants and bars. Is that correct? Absolutely correct. Uh, that's probably about a five to 10 minute drive away from Oyston. So that Southern corridor, you certainly have um, an active an active nightlife, um, an active and varied nightlife, I should say, uh, coupled with wonderful, wonderful uh, cuisine. And uh, the capital is, is what? Bridgetown is the capital, capital city. And uh, that's in the parish of St. Michael. And those banks that we mentioned um, a lot of them have established branches in Bridgetown, but they also serve, it, serve the other areas of, of the island as well. So the branches are scattered, but that's the main um, commercial arm in the island, Bridgetown, as our capital. And so if one was going to Barbados to do work, uh, that's where they would find uh, law firms and accounting firms and uh, banks and uh, things like that, correct? So to some extent. I mean, there, there, there are a number of other areas as, as well that, that have been that have benefited from, from a level of development in the, in the past 10, 15 years. I, I think of the, the Warrens area, which is really on the outskirts of Bridgetown and um, you know, Scotiabank, um, CIBC, uh, all in that general uh, area. Now, how has COVID-19 been for uh, Barbados? Uh, are there many infections? Has there been much mortality? If I come, do we have to, uh, to self-isolate for a while? What are the, what, what's the situation there? Well, we've seen 134 cases, um, regrettably seven, um, seven pandemic-related deaths. Um, the, the idea is to encourage folks to be tested prior to traveling to Barbados. Um, those who aren't tested will be tested on arrival. And um, of course, we, we have set up a number of facilities to cater to, 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 to persons who will be uh, quarantined as they await um, their test results and whatnot. So a number of satellite hotels have been developed such that they can cater to those. Uh, in the unfortunate event that um, you, you, you are COVID-19 uh, COVID positive during your stay, um, two isolation facilities, one in the south of the island, Paragon, and then in the northern part of the island, um, the, the newly constructed Harrison's Point facility. So those are the two 
um, facilities that are currently treating patients who are in isolation. And uh, what, uh, what do you think is going to happen with a second wave and things like that? Have you got plans for, uh, for stay at home or uh, no, you're just hopeful that it's not going to come? Yeah, we've, um, we've lifted the, the what, what I would, sorry, um, I, lo I, lo I lost my train of thought there lo lo looking out the window. Can I, can I go again? So go, go ahead. Thank you. Okay. So. Um, stay at home rules. Stay home, yeah. So we've lifted all the restrictions and persons are free to, to move about the island, though we are encouraging the same um, elements of safety as you would have here. Um, social distancing is, is still very much in, um, encouraged, as is uh, the wearing of the face mask, which has now become um, part and parcel of, of our lives. So we're still trying to ensure that we minimize um, the impact of, of COVID-19 and trying to ensure that those who do venture to Barbados uh, exercise the same level of, of care and caution that they would here. And what, what has been the impact on, uh, on, on tourism? It's got to have been pretty terrible. Yeah, significant impact, not just for Barbados, but the entire region uh, from about the middle of March. And that's why I said at the beginning, this, this program is, is really trying to, to, to rebuild um, in initial stages our industry which has really taken a serious hit. All the hotels, um, all the tourism players have been suffering since um, the middle of March through now. So we're in the process of what we think is, what we hope is the immediate aftermath of COVID now of sort of rebuilding the industry. And this, this program contributes to that. So my favorite restaurant, uh, I think was The Cliff. Is it still open? Very much so, uh, very much so. You, Brian, you seem to be very well acquainted with uh, with the west coast of the island sir i've stayed in the west coast numerous times as well as uh, i guess the south uh, east coast uh, numerous nice places. nice yeah the cliff restaurant was <laughs> so it's a favorite of many it was once uh, voted one of the top 50 restaurants in the world by restaurant magazine so that remains uh, one of the top places on the island i've also had the pleasure of uh, going to uh, the gold cup and watch horse racing what's happened first saturday in march every year is it still, is the horse race still open? Yeah, you want to take a guess who sponsors that race now? Who? Sandy Lane. Sandy Lane awesome. Gold Cup. Well, and I've uh, enjoyed uh, great golf uh, games at, I think, the uh, Barbados Golf Club as well as Westmoreland. Are those two appropriate names? Absolutely. Um, Barbados Golf Club, they do a lot of partner partnering with um, some of the hotels on the south coast, the, the Bougainvilliers, the Ocean 2, whatnot and Royal Westmoreland, wonderful facility. In fact, um, the, the Zagat guide actually suggested that Royal Westmoreland was the best course on the island. Awesome. And I remember going to the, right to the North Point at one point in time, and it was uh, sort of um, unbelievably wavy and rocky and stormy. Uh, I can't remember the name of the establishment that's right at the Animal North Point. Animal Flower Cave. And it was just spectacular. Yeah, the Animal Flower Cave. Persons say, you know, when you stand there and you look um, straight north, you're, you're, you're actually looking straight at um, Nova Scotia. Really? That's right. Well, uh, Peter, what's your story? Um, you've been in Canada for how long? Oh, just over four years. Um, mm -hmm. I joined tourism in 2006 and was based in the USA market prior to that. And I've been enjoying my time here in Toronto um, obviously monitoring COVID-19 and sort of trying to determine how Barbados um, can re-emerge in the coming months such that we, we position ourselves as a viable option for the Canadians who are looking um, to sort of bring about some sort of travel normalcy uh, to their lives again. So Barbados certainly stands ready to welcome all Canadians. And this program, this, this welcome stamp is really our way of saying come to Barbados for a long stay, an extended long stay, and you know, be a part of our community there. Peter Mayer is the Director, of Canada, Director for Canada for Barbadian Tourism Marketing. Thanks so much for joining us and telling us about the program that we all can take advantage of doing our uh, remote work in our home office in uh, a beautiful hotel or villa or something or other in uh, Barbados. Thanks very much. Thank you so much, Brian. Thank you. Good night.